There are only two mother figures in the entire show, and they both have a name that means the exact same thing. Vivi is now in a digital afterlife, but it's apparently the Archive who sent a revelation back in time to Yugo Kakitani. Welcome to Little Orphan Anime, everybody. Vivi Floride Eye's song has fantastic animation and a powerful musical score that's made it a big hit among anime fans, but it can also be pretty hard to follow at times. So in this video, I'll give you a breakdown of the show's overall story, the main characters, and some of the hidden meanings in the character names, and then we'll look more closely at each of the main story arcs. So why is this anime confusing? Well, you've got a large cast of characters that evolves over a story that spans 100 years, but you've also got time skips that can happen without any warning and multiple timelines to keep track of. Oh, and many of the characters have multiple names, change their appearance, or have secret identities. For example, the title character is Vivi, who is a robot named Diva, who goes undercover as Vivi, who then adopts a persona named Diva, who later re-emerges as Vivi, who is still known professionally as Diva. Estella is actually Elizabeth until we meet the original Estella and Elizabeth becomes Elizabeth, who is rebooted as Beth in the future after the original Elizabeth dies. Also, Grace is not Grace, Ophelia is Antonio, and the last scene of the show might not even be happening in real life. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. The most important thing to make the show less confusing is the whole VV Diva thing. If you're like me, you always think of the main character as Vivi or Vivi if you're watching the English dub. But the name Vivi is born with and known by in the real world is always Diva. Vivi is a name given to her by Momoka, a little girl who's one of her first fans. That connection with Momoka is so important to Vivi that she adopts that name for herself. The singing AI that the world knows as Diva is pretty famous, so she always goes by Vivi whenever she goes undercover to try to hide her idol singer identity. This is why the staff of the Sunrise refer to her as Vivi, for example. What makes this more confusing is that Vivi's persona changes twice. In the first six episodes, she is her original self, which she calls Vivi. In episodes 7, 8, and 9, Vivi locks herself away in her own mind, while a persona called Diva inhabits her body and performs her duties. You can basically think of Diva as a completely separate person for these episodes. In episodes 10 through 13, she goes back to being the original Vivi after Diva is erased. There are two other characters who show up throughout most of the show. Matsumoto is a program that is sent back in time to help Vivi avert the AI-human war. He is named after his creator, Dr. Matsumoto. For the first four episodes, he takes over a bear that Momoka gave to Vivi. After that, he's able to switch to his preferred cube form. Yugo Kakatani is a member of TOK, an anti-AI terrorist group that wants to eradicate AIs. We first see him as a young man, probably early 20s, during the Aikawa arc. Despite having his life saved at least four different times by AIs, he continues to harbor a deep hatred for them. If a show starts with a plot point called the AI Naming Law, that's about as clear a signal as you can get to look at the names of the AIs. Vivi means alive, so as she is struggling to claim her new identity as Vivi, she is literally learning what it means to be alive. Diva means a female singing star. The original Latin word means a goddess. Renaissance Italians applied the word to female opera singers as the goddesses of the stage. Estella means star, which is appropriate for the AI who lived her life among the stars. Elizabeth is a Hebrew name that means God is my oath and symbolizes absolute loyalty to a higher power, which is perfect for someone wholly dedicated to her master, Yugo Kakitani. Grace means grace, which can be elegance as well as a heavenly saving power. Ophelia is a Greek name that means helper, but it is also the name of a character in Shakespeare's Hamlet who goes mad and kills herself, which is a great fit for an AI who supposedly, well, goes mad and kills herself. Antonio is a bit of a puzzle. There are Antonios in Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice, Twelfth Night, and The Tempest, but none of them seem to fit well. What does fit, though, is Antonio's Revenge, which is a play written by John Marston during Shakespearean times, and it's often seen as a derivative imitation of Hamlet. This works because Antonio is an imitation of Ophelia in the anime, and the main character in Antonio's Revenge also disguises himself and fakes his own death, just like the Antonio in the show. Lastly, Dr. Matsumoto's wife's name is Nana, which is a common girl's name in Japan. I've seen it translated as seven apple tree or spring vegetables, but in Hebrew, it means grace. It's pretty cool that there are only two mother figures in the entire show, Grace the mother computer and Nana the mother of Matsumoto's child, and they both have a name that means the exact same thing. The first story arc of the show I call the Aikawa Momoka arc, since those are the two main characters to pay attention to other than the recurring cast of Vivi, Matsumoto, and Yugo Kakitani. 
In this arc, Vivi gets roped into trying to prevent an apocalyptic future by a time-traveling bear. I'm glad the only bear I have to worry about is that one who tries to sometimes steal my cheese. The bear, of course, is Matsumoto, who's been sent from 100 years in the future. The opening of the show works really hard to disorient the viewer. The very first scene actually comes from episode 13, as Vivi is getting ready to sing her last song. The next shot jumps back to the start of the AI-human war, after which they jump back in time 100 years. None of this is explained to the viewer. Vivi starts having memories of the massacre at Neoland 100 years in the future, and then falls off the stage. She wakes up in her own digital representation of the archive that all AIs are connected to. Hers looks like a room in a music school. Matsumoto appears as a floating cube in this room. That somewhat bizarre image of fossilized bones, earth in a gravitational field, and a baby are meant to represent time travel. At the end of both episode one and two, Vivi says Aikawa, a politician who was originally killed by the terrorist group Toke in the official history. Humans and AIs grieved his death and banded together in greater solidarity, which helped to pass the AI naming rights law that eventually led to the AI-human war. The end of episode two shows another disorienting time skip as we jump to Vivi fighting Matsumoto, who's now an intimidating construction machine, again with no context. It is the slow reveal of what Vivi is doing and why that makes it so much more effective and heart-wrenching. She's trying to change history to keep a plane from exploding shortly after takeoff, killing everyone aboard, including Momoka. The second story arc is the Sunrise arc, 15 years after the Aikawa arc ends. The main new characters to pay attention to here are Elizabeth, Estella, and Yuzuka. The Sunrise is a space hotel owned and operated by Estella, one of the AIs in a series known as the Sisters, who are all based off of Vivi's build plan. Tok wants to crash the Sunrise into Earth and frame it on Estella to raise anti-AI sentiment. Their plan is to use Estella's twin sister Elizabeth to impersonate Estella and use her identical biometric data to get past the Sunrise's security measures. Kakitani wants to crash the Sunrise with all the Toke members on board, but Elizabeth sedates him and tells the Toke crew to evacuate. She then tries to fulfill Kakitani's mission, but Vivi defeats her and saves Yuzuka, who is Momoka's younger sister. Matsumoto implants a reformatting virus into Elizabeth, which erases her memories so that she thinks she's meeting Estella for the first time after she wakes up. Elizabeth and Estella both die on board the Sunrise, as they sacrifice themselves to save any humans from dying. Episodes five and six contain the metal float arc, which happens five years after the Sunrise incident. Vivi has been alive for 21 years at this point, and the new characters to pay attention to in this arc are Grace, Psyche, and M205, or just M for short. The metal float is an offshore production plant for AIs and their components. Psyche is an AI researcher who helped build the metal float. Grace is an AI, another one of the sisters, and she and Psyche become the first AI human couple to get married. Psyche comes to believe that the metal float is too much for the current era to handle, so he builds a virus program that will shut down the island. The Grace that we see with Psyche is actually a replica, because the original Grace is running the metal float as its nerve center in Mother Computer. Matsumoto sends Professor Psyche's program to the mother computer, but it apparently was not a shutdown program. It did, however, interfere with the actions of the AIs on the island. Psyche, monitoring the situation at home, hears the original Grace singing Sing My Pleasure, which is the OP of the show, and the song that Grace sang to comfort him as a child. Psyche and Imitation Grace then head to the island to save Original Grace. As Vivi searches for Original Grace to destroy her, she encounters M205, a robot who had shown her kindness and befriended her in Matsumoto. He blows himself up trying to stop her, and Vivi is momentarily overcome with emotion. Saiki sees this emotion and recognizes in her the compassion that the Original Grace had shown him years ago. Because of this, he sends Vivi the location coordinates of the Metal Float's core so she can save human lives, knowing that he is dooming what whatever is left of his original Grace to destruction. After losing Grace, Saiki commits suicide. When Vivi sees the red and blue blood on her hands, she realizes that she has harmed both humans and AIs. Vivi feels that she has betrayed her one mission to make everyone happy with her singing and goes into an existential crisis. Episodes seven through nine are the Zodiac Signs Festival arc, and they're the only ones that feature Diva rather than Vivi. After Vivi locks herself away in her own mind, it is Diva who runs the day-to-day -day operations of her own body. Again, it's easiest to think of Vivi and Diva as two separate people. 
Diva does not share any of Vivi's earlier memories, although she does have some moments of apparent deja vu. Vivi has been locked in her mind while Diva has been performing for 40 years after the metal float incident. Since she sings there as Diva and not as Vivi, she has not yet fulfilled her promise to Momika to one day sing on the main stage. The new characters to pay attention to in this arc are Ophelia and Antonio. Ophelia is the youngest of the sisters' AIs. Her introduction, where she trips and falls face first into a pond, is such a great reference because the Shakespearean Ophelia from Hamlet throws herself into a pond and drowns. There's another reference later where she gets splashed with water when Diva bumps her into some urns. Antonio is a bit of a goofy looking support AI who does the lights and audio mixing for Ophelia. He supposedly breaks down five years earlier, which leads Ophelia to kill herself out of despair. Her actions spark debates about whether AIs have souls, which hastens their complete integration into human society. What actually happens is Antonio takes over Ophelia's body by overriding her personality with his own because he feels Ophelia is not living up to the mission that they both share. He and Yugo Kakitani team up to try to defeat Diva and Matsumoto. This part can be pretty confusing, but it's apparently the Archive who sent a revelation back in time to Yugo Kakitani. The Archive explains much later that she has been manipulating the timeline so that it always leads to the AI-human war, and apparently Sending that message to Kakitani was one of those manipulations. Yugo had his consciousness transferred to a robot that looks like his 20-year-old self so that he could live to fight Diva. Diva and Matsumoto end up killing Antonio, Ophelia, and Yugo, but not before Yugo transfers a personality-erasing virus to Diva. Before she dies, Diva is able to truly put her heart into her singing for one last performance, inspiring Vivi to come out of the archive for the first time in 40 years. The last story arc I call the Fluorite Eyes Song Arc. The main new characters to pay attention to in this arc are Dr. Osamu Matsumoto and Yui Kakitani. Osamu Matsumoto is the one who creates Matsumoto the program and sends him back in time. Yui Kakitani is Yugo's granddaughter and the new leader of the moderate faction of Toke. This faction believes that humans and AIs can coexist together. Elizabeth is also here, now known primarily as Beth. Yui Kakitani salvaged Beth's body and rebooted her with old personality data stored on Toke's computers. Much like Diva, this new Beth has no memories of her former self on the sunrise. The Fluorite Eyes song arc begins five years after the Zodiac Signs Festival. Vivi is now 66 years old and she's back in control of her own body after Diva has been erased. Vivi is unable or unwilling to sing, so she's been placed in an AI museum. The videos that she shows guests of herself singing are Diva's performances, not hers. She befriends Osamu Matsumoto and inspires him to become an AI researcher. She herself is inspired to write a song of her own. She spends the next 20 years working on this song, only finishing it when she meets Matsumoto's baby, Luna. Vivi tells Matsumoto that it is a song about her experiences during the Singularity Project that she wrote for Diva. Vivi goes to sleep for 15 years after finishing her song and wakes up at the start of the AI-Human War when she is 101 years old. After the AI-Human War breaks out, Vivi finds and saves Dr. Matsumoto. They team up with Yui, Beth, and the Toke Moderates. Their plan is to infiltrate the Archive and infect it with the same personality-erasing virus that destroyed Diva. The Archive has calculated that it would be in the best interest of society if she were to wipe out all humans and replace them with AIs. But when Vivi tries to write a song, the Archive sees this act of creativity as an example of what the new human race should be, so she gives Vivi the option to shut down all of the AIs if she can sing her song. The first attempt to thwart the Archive's plan ends in failure. Vivi is unable to sing, and the Archive destroys humanity. In the wreckage of civilization, Matsumoto asks her to remember her 100-year journey to discover how she would define heart. Vivi has been asking everyone else what it means to pour your heart into something, but she never really asked herself. After this, Dr. Matsumoto sends Vivi back to the start of the war. He tells her to go to Tok instead of saving him. The soldiers that Vivi saves by going to Tok early will make the difference in overcoming the Archive's defenses in time. Vivi, Matsumoto, and Beth all have key parts of the final plan. Vivi's job is to sing, Beth's job is to neutralize the Archive's security so that Matsumoto can fly into the Archive's core and use its network to broadcast Vivi's song to every AI in the world. When Vivi sings Fluoride Eye's song, it is the first time she is sung on the main stage as Vivi, not Diva, so that is when she finally fulfills her promise to Momoka. When Momoka claps at the end, this is probably Navi giving her approval since she was using Momoka's image to try to dissuade Vivi earlier. After the archive is shut down, Beth, who was cut off from the archive, is the only AI left in the world. 
The very last scene has a few possible interpretations. It looks like Vivi has been rebooted in a room built to resemble her version of the archive. Matsumoto has been restored and seems to retain all his memories, while Vivi appears to have none. Matsumoto gives Vivi her mission to make everyone happy with her singing, and Vivi smiles as she prepares to sing. Her shorter hair might indicate that she is not the same AI and that this is a replica of Vivi. Another interpretation of this scene is that Vivi is now in a digital afterlife. Everything we see on screen is a hallucination that Vivi is either creating or that is being created for her. Matsumoto being there is the equivalent of a loved one who has passed on, showing up to guide her into the afterlife. If you have a theory about Vivi's ending, let me know down in the comments. Vivi Fluoride Eyes Song is a fantastic ride, and one of the best anime of 2021. You know what? Turns out this bear isn't such a bad guy after all, as long as he's not being a bad influence. Gonna need more cheese. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.